Hello everyone, it's me, Sisyphian Works, and I don't have anyone to trip off from home this week. So yeah, I'm Sisyphian Works. How are you doing? Let's get to it. Um, I'm starting this video with an apology, and I'm sorry because it's been two weeks since I last uploaded anything, and before that it was two weeks before I uploaded anything. Uh, so, I haven't been keeping my end of the bargain up, so to speak. Like, I should be posting something every week and I haven't, I'm sorry about that. And even now, it's Tuesday, it's not Sunday. So, I'll be posting something this week, not this, I'll post another something this week. And then I'll post something the next week after. In other words, you have my word about that. That I will post something. Can't tell you what, but I'll post something. Um, as for the reason why it's Tuesday and not Sunday, that's because the planetary uh, movements uh, fucked things up. Uh, no, that's not it. Uh, the, the reason is I just forgot to upload what I did last week. Yeah, that's what happened. I forgot. Uh, I had a thing ready, I had it edited, and I was gonna upload it, and I didn't, and I'm sorry about that, and I thought I'd, I'd better apologize before. Uh, for this behavior, and I'll, I'll fix it. I'll do better. And, uh, but it, it makes me feel better that it's just, n it's not just me who can't keep a deadline. Even professional people can't keep deadlines, and I'm looking at Mad Mind Studios when I say that. And and for those of you who don't know, I don't blame you, because evidently I was the only one who was hyped. Two and a half years ago, a small company called Mad Mind Studios got together and formed a Kickstarter around a game called Agony, which promised a never-before-experienced level of descent into a hellish landscape of body yes, and fire and things, and it looked amazing, and it wasn't. What happened was they started the Kickstarter two and a half years ago, uh, half a year later, the Kickstarter finished. They were supposed to be finished developing the game last year. They, I think they released it last month, and I still haven't gotten my copy. And the people who have gotten their copies are complaining about bugs, and they are also complaining that it's just not a very well-made game. So, yeah, that's awkward. But uh, I don't care. Okay, I care. Not really. I don't. I care. Little. Um, what I was getting to is, I don't care anymore, even though I probably should. And you see, it's been so long now, I don't feel like I have paid for this game anymore. I feel like, uh, I ha I feel like I'm going to get a game and then I'm gonna like it or not like it. That's what I feel like. Thank you, but um, before I felt that way, <laughs> God was I excited Not about it. Before I heard all the grumblings, I was excited about it, and because it's a very simple concept with with evidently a lot of effort put into it, and I like that. I like simple with a lot of effort behind it. I like that. Yeah, I'm gonna stop myself there and just move on. All the information I really got about the game was you were so you were a soul trapped in hell and you were supposed to find someone called the Red Goddess, which is a Lilith-like figure. Her only she is an actual divinity, an actual god, goddess, and, and she rules hell. And you're supposed to find her to use her to get out of hell. Um, immediately, I had problems with that that concept because. Has no other soul in hell contemplated that before? Mm, yeah, a little bit awkward. I had a few problems with the thing, but I like the simplicity of it. You were so soul, you were supposed to escape hell, and uh, I like that. I like world building and I like backstory, but I like writing as well. So I started writing and I wrote a short story, and you will be hearing this short story in the background as I work on this on this thing, and I hope you enjoy it. But if you don't enjoy it, I have also sent it to Mr. Creepen. And, oh, Mr. Creepen. Dr. Creepen. He is a doctorate, he is a literature professor, and I should remember that, and so should you. You should respect him and his know-how, because even if he doesn't have the same actor's range as Mr. Creepypasta, he, his voice alone is ten times better 
So you should respect him, and so should I, and I should get on with this. And the the thing I was gonna uh, say, I put it in his Reddit page, and I hope he will read it and put it uh, and um, narrate it on YouTube. Uh, but I hope that'll happen. Uh, but if that doesn't happen, I also put it uh, it's on my DA, which I may link later on. I'm not entirely sure how to link these two uh, yet, because uh, moving on, because moving on. I uh, put a lot of effort into the uh, story. I uh, first I just bullshit wrote. I just wrote a lot of crap, and then I distilled that into something a bit less crap, and then distilled that again. And I I hope you'll enjoy the result. I think it's pretty good for me, and and I think it's the first short story that I have ever actually finished. So, and this is almost eight minutes long by now, so I am going to wrap it up. Uh, I hope you enjoy my story. If you don't enjoy my voice, I hope you enjoy my writing. And I'm sorry about this, but it's the only thing I can record on. And, uh, and uh, I will do better next week and the uh, week after that. And I... And I will stop saying I now and just get to it. There is a place where death won't go. There is no end to life there. No end to the suffering. It is her paradise. She created it for her worship and indulgence. She bars death from there, from the amassing victims of her never-ending cruelty. It is as old as mankind, and the first are still there. She takes all who allow her, who listen to her voice and follow it down to her dilating cosmos. A fire they hurtle down like flares to shatter against the soft, palpitating ground. A blighted desert of the bloody organ, sinew and muscle of those who came before stretching beyond the hateful horizon. Still moving, still pumping the foul swim. Hedges of pulsing muscle with masticating teeth for brambles. Tumorous silence with caverns like open wounds adorned with barren skeletons hanging from intestine lianas, rising from the desert of displaced organs. From the plateau of grizzle and bone, impish she-devils and abhorrent abominations come crawling for the promising impact of new playthings. New feed, new mulch for the mire of undying meat. The daughters render anatomies and the sons desecrate them, displace their organs around the field to eventually join with the suffering naked ground. Freed of their flesh, the souls of the damned dissipate into the sweltering air, like gases mixing in the atmosphere. Identity and memory lost in a disembodied wind searching the plains for a new vessel. A confusion of pain, hate and fear to be breathed in this wretched place. Some find refuge in the soil, in the meat slowly consuming the rockery and the helter skelter of pain, pleasure and uncertain sensations pressing into the skinless nerves of the meat. This is the womb of the lumbering Velphagor's nimble, many-limbed anemone and twisted succubi populating this place. From the aggregate of bodies, the tortured spirits are consummate anew, in monstrous bodies inside a vile and assuming matter. Born in agony, they twitch, struggle, and claw their way out of this heath to live among the damned like children in her care. Among them, something new is stirring. An unassuming body, unbothered and millennia in the making. Nothing expected it. It grew from happenstance and unguided by her hand. 
It twitches and struggles and breaks through the lining, tearing the soft pink wall like fabric before it falls down on the hard pallet of the ground. Blood rains from the severed veins and capillaries of the meek being. Emasculated and thin, it blindly flails for bearings, unused to the quiet of a singular body and mind. It feels the ground tilt upwards and follow it by instinct. It knows the direction up the clawing brine. The esophageal cave opens into a stoma in the open ground, ironically like a birth canal. Screaming echo on all sides, further blinding the creature from the environment. And the approaching danger. It doesn't perceive the baying of the horned amalgamation of woman, man and beast. In the soft ground clouds the trample of hooves stampeding towards it. The monster crushes its skull into the ground before flailing the body all around, breaking the creature apart before lying flat to slide against the erotic stimulation of blood and gore between it and the ground. It is unguarded for what comes. All around it, invisible to it, the soul does not dissipate. It does not vanish into the malevolence, it rises from the broken vessel and attacks, Piercing inside the creature, raping its essence for room and force the dweller in, in the Baphomet out to dissolve into the air in its stead. Confused but clear-sighted, it takes hold of the vile assemblage of parts and leans in to find its bearings, refined and perfected by spiritual survival. It knows its purpose, its motivation, to leave, escape. And it knows how. Her. It remembers from the scattered thoughts and memories of the land. The Red Goddess. She is the key. The road that 